This belt drive is the biggest piece of crap. This is one of my most favorite purchases from last year. It is an automatic retractable hose reel and it makes my life so much easier having to water everything and not worry about turning a hose reel, trying to make everything nice and neat, especially with a rotator cuff tear. Unfortunately, about five to six months into it, it wouldn't move back and forth. So all that's happening right now is when, when it retracts, it retracts only in one area. So then it's really difficult to retract the entire hose and then trying to pull it out has been really difficult. So I opened it up and for as much as I love this product, this belt drive is the biggest piece of crap. It is completely falling apart. I'm gonna show you how I fix this by buying a V-belt that is meant for industrial components. Pretty inexpensive. I will take this apart and show you how to put it in and fix it. Now I could have contacted the company to have them send me a new one because it is still under warranty, but I am not gonna replace this with the same thing. So the thing about this is you have to take both sides off. So you have to disconnect the hose on the other side. this guy out. Now we got to take the screws out all the way around. So this is the side you need in order to get the belt off. The first thing you want to remember when you do this is don't pull the hose out the whole way because then you won't be able to retract it once you put it back together. So I'm taking this guy out, this one wheel. There's a lot of grease in here, so just be mindful of that. So this was the belt that was in here, all shredded up, not moving the mechanism. So what I'm gonna do is take this aftermarket belt. It should fit nicely on here. Unfortunately, it's too wide. This is about five or six millimeters and this is about 10 millimeters, so I need to slice it in half, and then it should nicely fit onto these grooves like that. The other thing I need to do is it's gonna to be too long. So this is way too long, so I need to cut it so that I can appropriately size it. It's a little bit of a challenge right now because I can't get this the entire way around on this spindle, so I'm going to loosen it up a bit so I can just lift it up enough so I can get the whole belt underneath it. There we go. Yes, I am. Thank you. I am getting it together. Yes, I am. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I am going to mark here for as tight as I can get it. I'm going to mark the I'm gonna mark it right there. When I do this, this is where I need it to end. You know, now it's a, not a closed loop. Now I need to affix this so that it does make a closed loop. So attaching it, I want this extra little overlap and I'll show you why I want that overlap. If you find this video helpful or any of my videos helpful, please click that like button, subscribe, and the notification bell. It really does help me to keep providing you with videos that help you do those things you never thought you could. This is, like I said, a little bit bigger than five millimeters, less than six millimeters. And this one that I bought is about 10 millimeters. I've already scored this with my X-Acto knife. You can use the X-Acto knife to cut through it, but it's not the easiest thing to do, so I would just recommend getting yourself a pair of scissors and cutting through it that way. It's not gonna be perfect, but you should get pretty close to where it needs to be. Now here's the thing. Obviously this needs to be a closed loop in order for it to work. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can reattach belts. One is with clips, but you can't use those unless it's just a back and forth motion where it doesn't go through the entire loop. They probably make some that you can use that are meant for that, but I, um, I haven't seen one yet. I haven't looked hard enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I had already had this overlapped so here was the original mark that I made. That's where the belt needs to join itself again. 
So I'm going to tape it down and I'm going to score a diagonal mark. And I would actually be doing this on the corner of the table, but I didn't set up for that. So I'm making it harder for myself right now. <laughs> Just want it as flat as I can get it. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to do a score that's a diagonal. As best as I can, this is really, really thin. So I made the score on the first one and I'm going to, I'm going to cut it with the scissor like this. Then I'm going to score the other side, how I want it to connect using this as my guide. Okay. So now that I've scored this one, I'm going to make it just a little bit easier for me to see. The key here is the longer you have a piece, the more that there is to join together. So you don't want it to be, you don't want to cut it straight and then join it because that's not a lot of space for the glue to hang on to it, which is why you want it as long as you can. I usually like to do it about a couple centimeters. This is, this is about three and a half centimeters. It doesn't have to be quite that long, but give yourself at least one centimeter of length to work with. Okay, now I have those two pieces cut. All you need to do to join these together is some super glue. Believe it or not, super glue is super strong. You wanna give it the full 24 hours to cure. Here's the thing, I'm not using this on an engine, I'm not using this on something where it's life or death. If I were using it on something that was life or death, I would search to find one that is already completely a closed loop and not make any cuts in it. However, this is going on a hose reel. It's not a big deal if it's not the most strong thing, but believe me, it is pretty strong. What I'm gonna do here is I have a piece of tape that I've double-sided to stick down and I'm going to lock them on there real quick and tape this down again, just so it doesn't move. Now I'm using um, the Gorilla Super Glue Gel. It doesn't matter as long as it's cyanoacrylate you can use crazy glue, you can use super glue, it can be liquid, it can be gel, it doesn't matter. But just make sure you're giving it 24 hours to cure. I'm gonna flip it so that the flat side is down and the rib side is up. This stuff works really well. I'm just gonna put some on this side and join it with the other. I'm gonna get this all over my hands. Probably gonna stick to it. Line that up as best as possible. Hold it together for as long as you can. Your hands are gonna get sticky. I probably wouldn't use painter's tape because it just doesn't stick very well because that's the purpose of it, but I can't find any other tape right now, so that's what I'm using. Now I'm gonna let that sit there for at least a few hours and then I'll come back and remove it and then I will show you just how, how well it sticks together. This is the finished product. It's actually been sitting for a couple days because, well, I got busy. But as you can see, I'm pulling on it and the slice was there. Got a little tape stuck on this, but it should be fine. Now, I am going to loosen this wheel and run it around it. And again, the whole reason why I did not just contact the company and have them send me another belt is one it was a really crappy belt in the first place and i did not want to replace it with the same belt to have the same thing happen in another six months from now and anything i do i like making it better my goal is always to make it better and stronger than what we started with now maybe if i just get it onto it that would work It's so slippery. There we go. Works just fine. I'm going to put the uh, screw back in and then we'll get this puppy going. Look at that. Much better than this thing. I still have pieces falling apart in here. All right, now we're going to put it back together 
I'm sure it works very similar in other ones. The key, if you, if you do have this one and you're taking it apart, this is where you have to pay a lot of attention lining it up to make sure that this goes in the hole that it's supposed to go in. This is gonna go into this hole here and then this has to line up on this cog. And it helps if you have small hands to do this. Oh, here's this. Ah, so I'm struggling with it the whole. This is probably the most challenging part of it. There we go. All right, so that's done. Now we're gonna start putting everything back together. Put this piece on. You gotta line it up with those holes. I know this is my cheap little Black & Decker electric screwdriver. It's for small jobs, this thing has been. It's lightweight, it's easy, rechargeable. I'm not trying to get you to buy one, but. Mostly explaining why I'm using it. I'm just going to get all these screws in first. Just smell it. This has to line up with these four, which is why you don't want to pull the hose all the way out because if you need to adjust it, you're going to have to take it apart again. So there's one, two, three, four, and it goes, lines up on that. Now I've already got it pretty well lined up, so I don't have to worry about it. But the first time I took this apart, I did not pay attention to that and I had the hose reel all the way out, so I had to take it apart again. All right, gonna flip it over. This is where the hose goes on. Flip it over, put this guy on, and we'll see how it works. Okay. Brad's gonna put this up since I can't do it, but I can take this out. It's pretty hefty. Keep that in mind if you buy one of these things. Cool, now we're gonna see how this retracts. And remember, I'm doing this, it's still under warranty, but because I've opened it up, or if you do anything, remember it could void your warranty. So if you would prefer to have the warranty, contact them and have them fix it or send you a new one. Don't fix it yourself. But if you're like me, I prefer to fix it myself because most of the time I'm gonna make it better. Not always, but most of the time. All right, let's check it out. So I'm gonna pull this. Oh, oh, look, it works. Look, it works. It's moving. So this is exactly what it's supposed to do. This is here to help the hose evenly wind itself around the wheel so it doesn't only wind in one area and then you can only get half the hose in or less. This is an inexpensive way to get a better drive belt and you can easily do it yourself. Gluing it, you may have a problem where it doesn't glue properly the first time, but when you do it correctly, it will be strong enough to keep it in place. And I hope this helped, and thank you for joining me here on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.